Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. That was a clip from the late Mr. Teddy Pendergrass. Now, if you've seen the clip, that means YouTube let it go through. If not, that means I was flagged. This is the story of Teddy Pendergrass. Theodore Derice Pendergrass was born on March 26, 1950, was an American soul and R&B singer and songwriter. He was born in King Street, South Carolina. Teddy spent most of his life in the Philadelphia area and initially rose to fame as the lead singer of Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. After leaving the group in 1976, he launched a successful solo career under the Philadelphia International Label. Releasing five consecutive platinum albums, he made history during that period for an African-American R&B artist. He was the first to do so. Teddy's career was halted after a March 1982 car crash that him, left him paralyzed from the waist down. He continued his successful solo career until announcing his retirement in 2007. He passed away from respiratory failure in January 2010. Teddy was the only child of Jesse and Ida Geraldine Pendergrass. Ida suffered six miscarriages before successfully giving birth to Teddy. When he was very young, his father left the family. As Teddy grew older, his mother made a promise to him that she would find his father so that they could meet. She was a woman of her word and Teddy met his father when he was 11 years old. Not long after, Jesse was stabbed to death on June 13, 1962, during an altercation with another man. He was 47 years old. Teddy grew up in an impoverished neighborhood of North Philly and often sang in church. He dreamed of becoming a pastor and got his wish when at age 10, he was ordained as a minister, according to an author. Teddy also took up drums during this time and was a junior deacon at his church. He attended Thomas Edison High School for boys in North Philly. He sang with the Edison Master Singers. He dropped out in the 11th grade to enter the music business, recording his first song, Angel with Muddy Feet. The recording, however, wasn't a commercial success. Teddy played drums for several local Philly bands, eventually becoming the drummer of the Cadillacs, not the famed Harlem-based group of the same name. In 1970, he was spotted by the Blue Notes founder, Harold Melvin, who passed away in 1997, who also convinced Teddy to play drums in the group. However, during a performance, he began singing along and Melvin was impressed by his vocals and made him lead singer. Before he joined the group, the Blue Notes had struggled to find success. This all changed when they landed a recording deal with Philadelphia International Records in 1971, thus beginning Teddy's professional career. Successful collaboration with label founders Kenny Gable and Leon Huff. In 1972, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes released their first single, a slow, solemn ballad entitled, I Miss You. The song was originally written for the Dells, but the group passed on it. Noting how Teddy sounded like the Dells' lead singer, Marvin Jr., Kenny Gamble decided to build a song with Teddy, who was only 20 years old at the time of the recording. Teddy sings much of the song in a raspy, baritone voice that would be his trademark. The song also featured the Blue Notes member Lloyd Park singing falsetto in the background and it spotlighted Hero Melvin adding in a rap near the end of the song as Teddy kept singing Fainting Tears. The song, one of Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff's most creative productions, became a major R&B hit and put the Blue Notes on the map. The group's follow-up single, If You Don't Know Me By Now, brought the group to the mainstream with the song reaching the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100, while also reaching number one on the sole number one singles chart such as I Miss You. Before it, the song was originally intended for a different artist, fellow Philadelphia native Patti LaBelle and her group LaBelle, but the group couldn't record it due to scheduling conflicts. Teddy and LaBelle developed a close friendship that would last until he passed away. The group rode to fame with several more releases over the years, including The Love I Lost, a song that predated the upcoming disco music scene, The Ballad, Hope That We Can Be Together Soon, and Socially Conscious Singles, Wake Up Everybody, and Bad Luck. One of the group's notable singles was their original version of the Philly Soul classic, Don't Leave Me This Way, which turned into a disco smash when Motown artist Thelma Houston released her, her version in 1976. By 1975, Teddy Pendergrass and Harold Melvin were at odds with each other mainly over financial issues and personality concerns. Even though Teddy sang most of the group's songs, Harold was controlling the group's finances. At that point, Teddy wanted the group to be renamed Teddy Pendergrass and the Blue Notes because fans kept mistaking him for Harold. <clears throat> Teddy departed from the group in 1975 and the Blue Notes struggled to find a replacement. They eventually left Philadelphia International Records and toiled in relative obscurity until Harold Melvin's death in 1997. As of 2014, a version of the group still tours the old school circuit, 
performing as Harold Melvin's Blue Notes. In 1977, Teddy Pendergrass released his self-titled album, which went platinum on the strength of the disco hit, I Don't Love You Anymore. Its follow-up single, The Whole Town's Laughing At Me, became a top 20 R&B hit. Although not released as singles, the up-tempo album tracks, You Can't Hide From Yourself, and The More I Get, The More I Want, as well as The Ballad, and If I Had Were, also hits. The debut album was quickly followed by Life Is A Song Worth Singing in 1978. That album was even more successful with its singles, Only You, and the classic million-selling number one R&B hit, Close The Door. The latter song firmly established Teddy as the top male sex symbol in soul music. The album's popularity was furthered by the disco hit, Get Up, Get Down, Get Funky, Get Loose. The ballad, It Don't Hurt Now, and the mid-tempo classic, When Somebody Loves You Back, that double platinum number one R&B triumph was followed up in 1979 by two successes. The album's Teddy, which remained at number one on the Billboard R&B chart for eight weeks and was named the second biggest R&B album of the year. And the live release, Live Coast to Coast, hit soft Teddy included the classics, Come Go With Me, The Erotic Ballad, Turn Off the Lights, and the up-tempo album cut, Do Me. With his sex appeal on an all-time high after his 1979 tour, Teddy took a more mellow approach on his 1980 album, TP. It included the classic number two R&B hit, Love TKO, the Stephanie Mills duet with version Feel the Fire in the Ashford and Simpson composition, Is It Still Good to You? Between 1977 and 1981, he landed five consecutive platinum albums, which was a day record setting number for a rhythm and blues artist. Teddy's popularity became massive at the end of 1978, with sold-out audiences packing his shows. His manager, the renowned Shep Gordon, who was known for his innovative approaches to publicizing his artists, soon noticed that a huge number of his audience consisted of women of all races. Shep Gordon devised a plan for Teddy's next tour to play to just female audiences, starting a trend that continues to present day called Women Only Concerts. With four platinum albums and two gold albums, Teddy was on his way to being what the media called the Black Elvis, not only in terms of his crossover popularity, but also due to him by a mansion akin to Elvis's Graceland, located just outside his hometown of Philly. By early 1982, Teddy was perhaps the leading R&B male artist of his day, equaling the popularity of Marvin Gaye and surpassing Barry White and all others in the R&B genre. In 1980, the Isley Brothers released don't Say Goodnight, It's Time for Love, to compete with Teddy's Turn Off the Lights, which sensed Teddy's influence on the Quiet Storm format of Black music. On March 18, 1982, in the East Falls neighborhood of Philadelphia on Lincoln Drive near Renton House Street, Teddy was involved in a car crash while driving his new Rolls Royce Silver Spirit. At the time of the accident, the singer's license was suspended for unpaid parking tickets. He had also wrecked a Maserati the previous week. Rumor has it that alcohol played a factor, but was later debunked by police. He was reportedly driving Tanika Watson, a transgender nightclub performer who he had known since the 70s, to her home. Teddy would only say that Tanika Watson was a casual acquaintance. It appeared to Tanika that the cause of the crash was a me mechanical error in the car and that possibly someone had tampered with the brakes. The car hit a guardrail, crossed into the opposite lane, and hit two trees. No other cars were involved. The impact jammed the doors shut, trapping them for almost an hour until both were free. While Tanika Watson walked away from the collision with minor injuries, Teddy wasn't so lucky. He suffered a spinal cord injury, leaving him a tetraplegic, paralyzed from the chest down. He was never to walk again. Teddy Pendergrass got well wishes from thousands of fans during his recovery. In August 1982, Philadelphia International released this one's for you, which failed to chart successfully, as did 1983's Heaven Only Knows. Both albums included material Teddy had recorded before the crash. The albums completed his contract with Philadelphia International. By the time he decided to return to the studio to work on new music, he had struggled to find a record deal. Eventually signing a contract with Asylum Records and completing physical therapy, he released Love Language in 1984. The album included the pop ballad, Hold Me, featuring a then-unknown Whitney Houston. It reached number 38 on the Billboard album chart and was a certified gold by the RIAA. On July 13, 1985, Teddy made an emotional return to the stage at the historic live 
a concert in Philly in front of a live audience of over 100,000. The concert having an estimated 1.5 billion TV viewers. It was the 35-year-old's first live performance since the fatal accident. He tearfully thanked the audience for keeping him in their well wishes and then performed the Diana Ross song, Reach Out and Touch Somebody's Hand. In 1988, he scored his first R&B number one hit in nearly a decade when the song Joy from his album of the same name was released. A video of the song enjoyed heavy rotation on BET. It was also his final Hot 100 charted single, peaking at number 77. The album was certified gold by the RIA that same year. Also, Teddy's voice was heard on jingles of a then local Philly radio station, WSNJFM. Teddy kept recording through the 1990s. One of the singer's last hits was the new Jack Swing song, Believe in Love, released in 1994. In 1996, he starred alongside Stephanie Mills in the touring production of the gospel musical, Your Arms Too Short to Box for God. In 1998, Teddy released his autobiography entitled Truly Blessed. Teddy did a concert at the Wiltern Theater in Los Angeles on February 14, 2002, entitled The Power of Love. The concert became the album from Teddy with Love, which was released on the Razor Entire Record label later that year. It was his second and final album. Clips of the concert, in particular, his Everybody has been covered by a diverse range of acts from Simply Red to Patti LaBelle and was chosen as a rallying cry during the 2004 presidential campaign by Babyface to mobilize voters. In addition, Little Brother, Kanye West, Cameron, Twister, Ghostface, among others, have utilized his works. In 2006, Teddy announced his retirement from the entertainment business. In 2007, he briefly returned to performing to participate in Teddy 25, a celebration of life hope and possibilities, a 25th anniversary award ceremony that marked Teddy's car crash, but also raised money for his charity, the Teddy Pendergrass Alliance, and honored those who helped him since his accident. Teddy had three children, Tisha, LaDonna, and Theodore Jr. His manager and girlfriend, Tasmia, aka Taz Lang, was shot dead on the doorstep of her home on April 1977. The murder still remains unsolved, although Philly's Black Mafia has been suspected, as they allegedly resented Taz's control over Teddy's lucrative career. In June 1987, he married a former Philadelphia dancer named Karen Still, who danced in his shows. They divorced in 2002. Teddy published his autobiography, Truly Blessed, with Patricia Romanowski in 1998. In the spring of 2006, he met Joanne Williams. He proposed to her after four months of knowing each other. They married in a private ceremony officiated by his pastor, Alan Waller of Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church on Easter Sunday, March 23, 2008. A formal wedding was celebrated at the Ocean Cliff Resort in Newport, Rhode Island. On September 6, 2008, as members of Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church, Joanne Pendergrass set up the Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church Youth Fund in the name of Teddy to provide assistance in a center for Philly's inner city youth. On June 5, 2009, Teddy underwent a sur successful surgery for colon cancer and returned home to recover. A few weeks later, he returned to the hospital with respiratory issues. After seven months, he passed away of respiratory failure on January 13, 2010, with his wife Joanne by his side at Bryn Mawr Hospital in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. He was 59 years old. His body was interred at the West Laurel Hill Cemetery in Bala, Kenwood, Pennsylvania. As of 2015, there are plans to make a feature film biopic of Teddy's life, and Tyrese Gibson is set to star as the late singer. In 2020, Essence Magazine wrote that Tyrese reached out to director Lee Daniels to produce the film. In 2019, BBC Film made a documentary on Teddy's If You Don't Lo Know Me. It was released February 8th on Showtime. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And rest in peace to the late Teddy Pendergrass. And one other thing. Please excuse the stuttering. I have health issues and that's what's causing it. Just bear with me. All right. Thanks for the support.